Hi, everyone. It is Cheryl Hickerson at Females in Finance. And we have our longtime friend, Whitlin, you're here from uh, Amplify Reviews, and he's in Georgia, which is probably be pretty sunny today. Oh, it's great, great weather right now. Yes. Might yeah, be but... 70s and sunny. <sighs> That's why they always have events. Yeah, it's April. April in Atlanta is a good time to be in Atlanta. It's not hot Atlanta by then. It's just Atlanta. And uh, I want to, you know, as he's getting ready to, he's going to be actually sh sharing his screen today, but I want to set this up a little bit because you might be sitting there going like, what is Amplify Reviews? Which, what's going to talk about that? But what I want to ask the question to those who are listening in um, or watching this is uh, how many of you go to Google today and just look for reviews on and or look for anything? I literally just said to it before we hit uh, record. I took Mabel the dog to the dog groomer, a new dog groomer. I went on, went to the reviews to make sure that no one was going to make her look like an idiot when we got done with this. And this is a dog, everybody, that the fur, I promise, is going to grow back in two months. Okay. I'm going to be having to go through this again. And here I am. And I was thinking of you during this process because I'm sitting here looking this up and I thought, this is what people do for financial advisors too. And I, and, and I, no, you're going to talk about this. But the other thing is, is I get a lot of pushback from advisors who say, my clients are just too busy to look for things online and they're not going to. And I'm like, that's actually not true. They are looking at things online, whether you know it or not. And this is where your expertise really comes into play. So you're up. It's all of you today. All right. Well, thank you, Cheryl. I'm going to go ahead and try to share my screen and dive yes. in. And as we said, um, my goal is to try and give everyone an overview of what we do and the value that we provide um, as quickly as possible. So you can watch this, decide whether or not this is something of interest to you. And if it is, I'm always happy to have a conversation with anyone, but especially anyone from females in finance. So let's dive in. I'm going to share the whole screen here, I think. Yeah, I see it coming up. Thank you. Great. All right. So let's dive right in. I start with this slide saying the starting pistol has been fired. If you think about it, uh, the SEC marketing rule, which had the compliance deadline in November of 2022, was the SEC's acknowledgement that they had fallen behind the times and they needed to help people be modern in the way that they were marketing. And to me, the most relevant uh, the, the standout part of this change in the marketing rule was their new guidance on testimonials and endorsements. Relevant to me because as we'll talk about, um, I've been working in online reviews for about a decade now. And what we saw in healthcare was when hospitals started embracing uh, online ratings and reviews, others followed very quickly. There was a big element of FOMO. The financial advisor world is one of the last industries to get on board with online reviews. And now that this regulation has been clarified and announced and permission has been given, I just see it as inevitable that advisors are going to need to get on board with online reviews. And the rest of the slides are gonna talk about why. But the big takeaway here is there is a lot of benefit to being ahead of the curve instead of behind the curve on this. So let's talk about why. Why are these so important? Lots of stats. Number one, as Cheryl just got done saying, consumers love online reviews, tons and tons of data points to support it. A recent survey said over three fourths of people use them whenever they are searching for a local business. More specifically, even though this is a new, av newly available thing for advisors, in consumers' mind, whether you're looking at financial or legal services, reviews are gonna be very important in that selection process. This stat has fluctuated over time and is hard to believe, but uh, a number of people trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. Wow. I initially thought this was crazy, but what will often happen and is relevant for advisors is you'll ask for personal recommendations and you might get three or four or five, and then you're going to Google those recommendations and the tie is going to be broken by what you find in the online reviews. And I think that's very relevant here as well. And then importantly, if a business asks their customers or clients to write reviews, there's a very good chance they're willing to do it. That's something that all of the other industries have trained consumers to do and advisors can take advantage of. So the question then becomes, is my online presence going to 
help someone reach out to me if they've been referred to me or discourage them from reaching out to me. And so we've got another, um, another study here on the left that basically says what is intuitively obvious to us. If I have three recommendations of an advisor, whether I'm looking for reviews or not, I'm gonna go Google all three of them. And Google is gonna tell me whether or not there are reviews for any of those. And so if I have three that I felt equal about, and one of them has a meaningful number of positive reviews and the other two do not, there's a very good chance that's the end of the evaluation and we know which one's gonna wind up. So if you're one of the early folks to adopt this, you're gonna win business because of it. And if you're late, you're gonna to have to adopt it just to catch up with everyone else. So what do we do at Amplify Reviews? We collect reviews from your clients. We verify that the only people writing the reviews are your clients. And obviously for all of this, uh, being compliant with the SEC and FINRA is uh, a guiding principle. Number two is our best practice approach is to publish these on your own website. This is what we saw in our previous business in healthcare and hospitals. And there's a number of benefits, but the two big ones are you have full control over the compliance and to the extent that reviews provide a lot of SEO value, you want that SEO traffic coming to your site, not going to some third party directory site. And then number three, because we've been doing this for about a decade, we wanna try and require as little change from your existing processes as possible to do this. So quickly, as I alluded to, this is my startup team has been working together and working in online reviews for over a decade. Our technology has published over 60 million patient reviews in the healthcare field. We built this platform Amplify Reviews to take that same capability set and our experience to other industries. And we've landed on the financial advisor world largely because of those regulatory changes. How does it work? We have a customizable email template on the right with a very succinct, clear call to action. Users can click on whatever their rating is going to be. Each of these is a hyperlink that will take them over to our landing page where they confirm their rating, write their review and hit submit. We often mention in the collection in the request email that the whole thing should take less than 60 seconds. Now, if they want to be more thoughtful, they certainly can, but uh, because we make it clear that it's not a heavy ask, it's not a 15 minute survey, we're gonna get a much higher response rate for that. Um, importantly, this is the other thing that's different about our approach. And this is what makes this essentially a no risk proposition for folks who might be apprehensive about this. Unlike a campaign where you're trying to drive reviews to a third party site, because the initial intent is to collect through our platform and publish on your own site, we can separate each of these steps. So first is we collect the feedback from your clients. Most folks use our email tool, but we've got a number of options there. Number two, in a moment, I'm gonna show you our dashboard. You get to look in our dashboard at all of the feedback that has come in, what the ratings are, what the comments are. For compliance, you cannot cherry pick only the good reviews, right? The regulations are very clear on that. But what our approach lets you do is look at the feedback in total and decide, do we want this to become our marketing initiative as ratings and reviews, or would we rather just take it as customer feedback, address some concerns in-house, and maybe we re revisit this in six months? Now, I can tell you the apprehension is natural, but everybody is pleasantly surprised with the, maybe not surprised, everybody is pleased with the feedback that comes in, and they wind up wanting to publish it because, as we said, reviews are some of the most powerful marketing tools you can have out there. So then number three is once you know what you've got, you flip a switch, you put two small code snippets that we provide onto your website, and now you have those ratings and reviews on your website, providing that social proof that consumers are looking for. Three elements that our clients implement. One is this summary ratings widget. So the goal is to provide a format that consumers recognize and are familiar with and have seen elsewhere online. And we want to present it in a way where the assumptions that they're making about this are accurate in terms of what's behind it. So the summary has a visual depiction of the average star rating, a numerical description of exactly what the rating is, and a count of the number of reviews. 
The second thing here is, again, checking all the boxes for compliance. We've got to hit the disclosure language that is required by the SEC and FINRA. We have a great template. Most of our clients use the template as is, but this is customizable if you need to. The other thing you'll see here is the link to the full program explanation. So basically what the regulators want is for firms to be transparent with prospects, with their audiences and their marketing about what it is that they're presenting them with. So we have, an, again, another template for what the program is, but you want to be able to explain to users where did these reviews come from, uh, how do we collect them, and what do we publish or what wouldn't we publish? And we'll talk more about that in one sec. And then the last part is the feed of reviews. Again, looking just like hopefully what they would find elsewhere online, Amazon being one of the most common examples. Very simply, if from everything we've talked about before, you believe that reviews are inevitable and you believe that the firms that adopt them earlier are going to win some of that business where it's a toss up between you and a competitor and those reviews are going to sway some of those folks into your camp. One new, one new prospect coming in your door that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten is going to give you at least a 10 times ROI on our very modest investment here. So that's the slides I wanted to talk about. And let's jump over quickly. I'm going to show you two examples in our dashboard. One of our, uh, clients, Life Plan Financial Advisor. Know that one? Yes, yeah. uh, I imagine I have you to thank. So they decided to put in a dedicated page for their testimonials. They have our summary rating widget. They have their disclosure language. They have a feed of reviews and you can decide how many come up first before you scroll to see more. This, by the way, is an Osaic client. So it took us six months to get through their approval yeah. process, but we have, which is great. They also have a link to a great description of their program. So they explain, this is what the program is. Why are we doing it? How did we collect the feedback? And then under what circumstances would we not publish a review? And the obvious ones are if there's profanity, if there's personally identifiable information, or if the content violates any of the SEC's yeah. prohibitions on marketing. One other example, just so you can see that there's a lot of variety here, Equilibrium Wealth Advisors, they've got a great number of reviews. They provide this summary rating up top, but when you come down and look at the review feed, they've chosen to embrace both our first party system, collecting all the feedback in a closed loop system and leveraging the Google reviews that they've been able to drive. And so we can in one feed show users all of those mixed together so that they can see here's proof from across the internet in terms of what our clients have to say about us. So I'll quickly show you the dashboard and we'll see where we go from there. The main thing I want people to see here is this is the comment feed. When new feedback is left, it all comes in in this pending status. If it's pending, that means it does not flow through to the code that we've put on your website. So if you have an ongoing review collection process, new reviews still come in in a pending status and you have to, you or someone from compliance gets the opportunity to look at each review and decide, does this meet our policy? Or is there anything objectionable that we wouldn't publish? Nine times out of 10 or more than nine times out of 10, you just click on publish. The status changes to published. It will flow through to your website and be included in the feed. But for compliance, we've got two other options. If you want to discuss this with someone else, someone in compliance, a broader team, you can flag the review and put it in a queue for later consideration. Or if there is content in there that violates your policy, you can document exactly why is it that we're not going to publish this review. And if it's a regulatory violation, you can come in and add some commentary. Um, maybe it's a good review, but somebody made a mention of the performance that they've gotten, and it sounds like they're telling others they can expect that. So this one moves to an archive status. Obviously, records retained in our system for audit history, but um, not going to flow through to the reviews on your website. So in a nutshell, that's both what we do, why we do it, and a little bit of how it works. And I know, Cheryl, you, you uh, teed up a good question at the beginning. 
this is really for, so who this isn't for is a few state regulated advisors where you know your state has not yet embraced those similar standards of the SEC with regard to the marketing rule. But anyone from a solo advisor to a larger RIA firm, RIAs are sort of our sweet spot right now, or anybody who's a consultant who works either in marketing or operations with some of these groups, um, I'd love to love to have a conversation and help you understand how this can help ensure that you are converting more of your prospects into clients. Love it. You know, I've written down some questions while you're talking because that's great. just who I am. I did a lot of talking. So let's I help. know. No, no, it's great. This is such good information. So the first thing that I wrote down, because I think about like I'm in the driver's seat of being an advisor because I've done this for 30 some odd years, right? If we are not reflexively asked to go out and ask for the review, we just tend to not do it. Okay. So my first thing was talking about can Amplify reviews be in whether it's through an API or not in a CRM system, like a, like a red tail, a wealth box, it's a, you know, Salesforce so that when it comes up, it becomes a task or it becomes a, a link that what you provided there, you showed before yeah. that link automatically goes out to the client and says, Hey, we've done a review for you, or you've been our client for a year. Would you mind giving us a review? What are your thoughts around that? It's a great question. So uh, in the interest of speed, I didn't dive into a lot of this, but we have a few things that we can do specifically to, to address that sort of need. One is if you want, you can, um, you can put our little email widget into your okay. own email templates. Okay. So if you know you already have something going out, that's one way you can do this. The other one is we're very, um, open to options of how to integrate. The easiest way we can do today is if you have a system that can put a file in an FTP server, we can go retrieve it. So to your question, if you could automate a report in CRM that says once a week or once a month, spit out a report of everyone who's new in the past timeframe or has been a client for X timeframe, we can go ping that FTP, ingest that file and automatically send out these requests from our system. And I really love that. And the reason why I say there's two things here. One is that the advisor needs to be client facing. In my opinion, a lot of these, uh, the fintech part of it supports that work. But what I, I say to advisors a lot of times is I don't want, I want you to understand superficially how this stuff works, but there's people who do the work. And this is really where a junior planner and, a, uh, you know, a clerical staff, you know, somebody like that can come in and very easily be manipulating the the need for to go out and collect the information, to bring it in, to do all of that, coordinating it, you know, to get, make it happen. I think that when I see what you just showed me there, there's two things. I think there's completed reviews that we need to send out to clients that say, hey, we've really got a lot of really good testimonials that have come up recently. I just wanted to share these with you so they can go out and go, well, let me see what somebody says about you or even an email content, whether you're doing that through uh, a system like Snappy, or if you're using your own proprietary system or whatever that might be, remember to send the review out too and show people like, it's really okay, everyone to say, look at me, I did all right, you know, yay me, pat me on my back. I think it's just as important as asking for the review. So like it closes, the, it's like the cyclical system you've built in for them. It, am I on point with that? Absolutely. You actually reminded me of a feature I, I definitely should have mentioned in here. So we also have this ability to come in and ah. find some templates for something that you're going to want to share on social media. So let's see if any of these, oh, come on. Oh, got it. This is a pending review. Let me come and find one that we've already published. There we go. Um, here's what we do. You can adjust. Oh, that's beautiful templates of this can become your social media uh, content. <laughs> as well. So this is, you know, one of the hardest things to do for content marketing is come up with the content. And the beauty of reviews is your clients write it for you. And it's more credible because it's not you talking about yourself. It's somebody else talking yeah. about you. So this can become a stream of content for your social presence um, as well. So you get a number of wins. I love that. I love it. And so I'm assuming too, that you can work with something like Zapier, for example, to create a oh, Zap. Yeah. To, to, yeah. I think anybody can work with Zapier, right? You would think that, hold on, you know, back then, I before we had Zapier, I don't know if you remember, 
if this, then that. They used to have recipes mm -hmm. that you yeah, create yeah. And, yeah. and applets, I think they called them for a long time. So I've been doing this a while, you know, and I love the idea of the automation feature of, hey, you know, collect this and let somebody else, let it do the hard work. But I do see the other thing that I wrote down that if it were me, that I would do is using a system like this, which I really, I know we've talked in the past. I really need to see how we can bring this into females and finance because I'm collecting these testimonials all the time. Yep. This is just beautiful. But I think that we should take the reviews and put them on LinkedIn company pages and our personal pages like that, you know, in the dynamic content section of a LinkedIn profile, for example, having a link to some of these where people can actually pull it up and it shows that it's there. Uh, yeah. Some of them can't do it because of compliance. Okay. They can't put reviews on that, but for everybody else who doesn't have that, you can put that in there. And I think that that would be really smart because I do, I, I was at a LinkedIn meeting one time Oh, with, this was years back and they said something and I'll never forget. You know how you're just like writing or doing something and all of a sudden somebody says something and you're like, wait, wait, what? And so I was in the middle of writing something and the woman said, if you have a designation or you have reviews on your site, you are more likely to be hired by someone than not. And my head shot up and I was like, whoa, 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 back that up for a second. I said, so if they, she was like, so for example, if you have designations, put it behind your name, you know, and again, compliance. But the other thing was, is if you had testimonials, she said, you should be putting them on your site yeah. and people don't do this. And, and I, and I'm going to pick on uh, overgeneralizing with the women. A lot of you have best kept secret syndrome. Uh, where you'll tell me like amazing things that you do. And I'm thinking, how did I just find this out? Because you're not sharing and amplifying the review that you received. I think that's so critical. This has just been phenomenal. Every time I see you, I feel like you've done something new. Well, I'll try and keep it that way. But I <laughs> no, this is great. This is great. So um, as we wrap up, I would like for everybody to know a couple of things. One, what is... Uh, very active in our male ally network, Wit is very active as a partner here. He's very active at our FinTech round table. He's very active at our sip and saver. He's very active at females in finance. And I believe that, you know, I, I believe in you and I know that you believe in us. And I just want to share how grateful I am for that. But I do think that if you're watching this one, if you're the person that Wit likes to work with and is wanting to work with, um, reach out to him. So easy. We'll make certain we have all your contact information for this. Two, if you know somebody who should be working, please make the connection happen. We cannot possibly know all the great people and we need to, we're very dependent on each other to make that happen. So I think that's important too. And then if you work at a company that you're like, this would be great to integrate with us. Or if you're working at a broker dealer, this would be great. Please also reach out and connect with to that. So that that six month process, as you spoke about with Osaic is pretty common for a lot of the broker dealer, uh, you know, environments out there. Let's make it happen sooner than later for you. Yeah. Well, thank but, you so much. Absolutely, friend. I appreciate all of this today. You're the very best. And we'll make sure we get this out in the newsletter too. Awesome. Thank all right. You. Take care.